Are you struggling to maintain code quality and security across your internal developer platforms? Or are you struggling to balance speed and security in your GitOps workflows? Or do you worry and spend too much time manually checking about the licenses and risks of vulnerabilities or dependencies in your applications? And at the same time, you also need a multi-tenant architecture-based solution to restrict visibility for different users in your organization? If so, don't worry. Hey, I am Kush, working as a data platform engineer. And today I'm going to discuss with you on the topic, automating secure GitOps workflow with multi-tenant Sonar Cube and dependency track on Kubernetes. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but don't worry. I'll break it down for you. By the way, this is the high level agenda that I'll be covering throughout the session. That is starting from challenges in maintaining code quality and security, solution architecture, deploying Sonar Cube and dependency track on Kubernetes, automating GitOps workflow using GitHub action based CI pipelines and configuring multi-tenant architecture on these tools. First off, let's talk about why this topic is so important. As developers, we all know how crucial it is to maintain code quality and security. But as our projects grow and become more complex, it can be a real challenge to keep everything in check. And that's where platform engineering teams come in. These are the folks who are responsible for making that all the moving parts of our development environment work together seamlessly. But let's face it, it's not an easy job, right? There are so many different tools and processes to manage, and sometimes it feels like we are fighting fires left and right. And that's not even taking into account the ever present threat of security vulnerabilities. It's enough to make anyone feel overwhelmed. Few of the challenges faced by platform engineering teams are managing vulnerabilities and licenses of third party libraries, ensuring compliance and governance across multiple teams. Few of the other challenges faced in maintaining code quality and security are coverage reports, technical debts, risk assessments, security risks in the software supply chain. Code quality issues like bugs, vulnerability, code smells can lead to slower time to market. And we also know that lack of automated code quality analysis can lead to inconsistencies and errors in the system. Just for your information, according to the cost of data breach report of 2022 by IBM Security, the global average total cost of a data breach stood at 4.35 million US dollars. And in 2022, vulnerabilities in third party software was responsible for 13% of breaches. So as you can see, there are a lot of challenges that we face when it comes to maintaining code quality and security. But don't worry, we are not alone. There are tools and processes that we can use to make our lives easier. And that's what we are going to talk next. So one such tool is Sonar Cube. It is a tool that analyzes your code for bugs, vulnerabilities and maintainability issues to help you improve its overall quality. It helps to reduce the pain points by providing various features like code quality analysis, security analysis, code deduplication detection, maintainability analysis, code coverage analysis, technical debt tracking, issue tracking, and many more, including support to various plugins. Another such tool is dependency track. It is a tool that helps you manage your software dependencies by identifying and tracking vulnerabilities and licensing issues in third party uh, libraries. It provides various features like third party library vulnerability scanning, license compliance checking, software supply chain security risk analysis, and many more with REST API and plugin support. Now, let me give you a brief about this solution architecture. What is happening in here is the platform engineering team is responsible for maintaining this GitOps repository containing infrastructure as a code Argo CD based manifest files. Platform engineers will first set up Kubernetes, deploy Argo CD components on Kubernetes, and add manifest files for SonarCube and DTrack in GitOps repository. GitOps repository is considered as a desired state, whereas the Kubernetes cluster is considered to be the actual state of the applications or the resources running in them. And it's the Argo CD's job to sync them. Argo CD will then automatically deploy SonarCube and DTrack in Kubernetes based on the manifest files added in the GitOps repository, which I'll show you in a bit that works on pool based mechanism. Platform engineering team will then implement multi-tenant architecture in these instances and provide authentication tokens for sharing reports to these instances. On the other side, there would be a GitHub enterprise 
comprising of multiple organizations that comprises of multiple github repository with project code and a github action based ci pipeline the ci workflow runs based on the workflow trigger set the ci step for sonar cube is responsible for generating sonar scan report and passes it to the respective sonar cube instance tenant using the sonar token and the s bomb that is the software bill of material is generated by the dtrack ci step which is then pushed to dtrack using the teams api key you see developer from this organization one will only be able to view the sonar cube scan report that are restricted within tenant one of sonar cube and same for developers from other organizations that is applicable for dtrack as well now let's understand this in a bit detail this is the GitOps architecture which I just now talked about where Argo CD works on a pool based mechanism where its job is to ensure that whatever infrastructure as a code manifest files are added in the GitOps repository, it pulls those files from GitOps repositories and deploys them as an application on the Kubernetes cluster. Next is uh, let's figure out how to set up Sonar Kube and dependency track on Kubernetes. So initially the first step as we talked is setting up Kubernetes cluster. Then we set up Argo CD in Kubernetes cluster and then we deploy Sonar Cube and dependency track using Argo CD manifest in the GitOps repository. How can we set up Kubernetes? So there are various ways and options available for setting up Kubernetes. A few of them are we can set up local clusters using tools like K3D, MicroKeds and others. We also have popularly way of managing Kubernetes cluster that is cloud managed cluster, which are being services been provided by companies like Azure, Google, AWS, uh, Amazon, etc. Next is once we set up Kubernetes, we need to set up Argo CD and we also create GitOps repo, right? So once we both, we set up both of these components, we need to connect each other. So to connect them, there are two ways. Either you can connect it using the Argo CD UI, or you can also created via the manifest file. So if you created via Argo CD UI, you need to create it using SSH, HTTPS or GitHub application or via Google cloud, right? So this is an example for setting up Sonar Cube using Argo CD manifest in GitOps repo. So here, what we have done is this is a Argo CD uh, CRD and we have, I have particularly mentioned that, Hey, this is the Sonar Cube chart of this particular version. And Sonar Cube to be deployed on Kubernetes would require this many resources along with it. And it should be uh, deployed in this particular Sonar Cube Kubernetes namespace. So if it doesn't exist, it will create on its own because here we have mentioned create namespace equals to true if it doesn't exist. And additional to this, these are options. Optional, I have set up my Cube, uh, Sonar Cube instance and provided the host name for the uh, domain name that I uh, own. Uh, which you may or may not do it as per your requirements. And this is the same example for dependency track um, CRD as well. So here we have provided the helm chart for the dependency chart. So Argo CD will pull these charts and deploy a uh, dependency track on Kubernetes cluster. And once Argo CD pulls these changes, you can view those deployments on the Argo CD UI. As you can see here, dependency track and Sonar Cube has been successfully uh, deployed on Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this all are hosted currently on my external DNS, but then you can also do it by port forwarding this particular tools. Next up, let's talk about how we add Sonar Cube and dependency tech based GitHub actions to our CI pipeline. This is where the real magic happens. By integrating these tools into our pipeline, we can automatically check our code for quality and security issues as we are developing it. This means that we catch issues early on before they become bigger problems down the line. And let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing those green check marks popping up in your GitHub pull request, right? But wait, there's more. By automating our GitOps workflow with Sonar Cube and dependency track on Kubernetes, we are not just catching issues earlier. We are also making our platform engineering team's lives a lot easier, right? Think about it. When we automate our processes, we are reducing the risk of human error. We are also freeing up our team's time to focus on more important tasks rather than spending their days manually checking about their code, right? Now, let me take you to the steps to automate using GitHub Actions. Uh, let me explain you this with an example code itself. So here you see this is an GitHub Action CI code snippet, how it looks. So what we do initially, 
uh, we would set the workflow triggers in here. Uh, then we need to set up, we need to check out the repository uh, for which we want to run our CI pipeline for. And then we set up the environment required. For example, if it's Java project, we'll set up Java. And then we can cache the SonarCube packages and the Maven packages. It would change according to the projects that um, developers are building. This particular GitHub action is would create a SonarCube analysis report and send it to the SonarCube instance deployed in the Kubernetes. And this particular action would be responsible for generating SBOM that is in the Cyclone DX format. Other formats are SPDX and dependency check that would vary according to the requirements. And then it would send this particular generated SBOM to the dependency check again deployed on Kubernetes. Right now, I'm not going into the details of the implementation because it could vary from team to team what type of CI pipelines they are using and because of uh, time limitation. Once the SonarCube analysis report is generated and pushed to SonarCube instance, this is how it would look. Uh, this says, hey, 91% of the code has been covered. And this particular um, step says that there are duplications in your code. You need to avoid it. So this are like various code quality things that have been covered in the uh, SonarCube scan report. And when we have currently deployed the community edition, but then if you want more features, you can choose any of the other editions available. Uh, same as the SBOM that has been generated and pushed to dependency track. It says that hey, for this particular project, the SBOM has been created and imported on this particular day, and it's the format is Cyclone DX. And then there are various other features that have been segregated in dependency track which are like components, as you can see, it says that what is the current version of the component that has been running in our application and what group does it belongs to, what is the license that it has uh, and other details. There are other uh, features like dependency graph across the packages, then you can audit vulnerabilities and then you can also exploit uh, various uh, predictions uh, within dependency trick. All right, we have covered a lot of ground so far, but now it's time to dive deep into another important topic, creating a multi-tenant architecture on SonarCube and dependency track. So first things first, what is multi-tenancy? Essentially, it's the ability to support multiple users or group of users on a single instance of a software application. And why is this important? Well, it allows us to restrict visibility for different users. For example, we might want to limit certain users access to certain projects or repositories, right? This is especially important when it comes to maintaining security and compliance. It also helps to optimize resource utilization. Uh, some other features for multi-tenant architecture are resource optimization, scalability, data isolation, customization, centralized management, compliance, and many more. Now let's dive into some specific of achieving multi-tenancy in SonarCube. So what we do is once we deploy SonarCube on our Kubernetes cluster, we'll log into SonarCube as an admin, then we create new groups and new users we add those users to this particular groups and then we create permission templates. So in SonarCube permission templates are more like pre-configured sets of permissions that can be applied to a group of users or projects in order to manage access control. So once you create this permission templates, we need to then assign this permission templates to new groups. So what happens is once this permission template has been applied to a new group or new project, the users in that group or the project will have the permissions inherited as it is that were mentioned in the template. And these are the addition of permissions that you can change whenever you want to change and update the permission template. And one key important feature to enable multi-tenancy in SonarCube is to ensure that the project level permission is set to private. Uh, and then we can set other RBAC rules for like global permissions, like who can create projects and etc. Once the whole process is done, we again go back to the users tab and then we generate a token and this particular token that has been generated at the user level has been used as a sonar token in the github ci that we saw earlier right so this once as you can see here in the sonar cube action here it is asking for a sonar token which is uh, taken for authentication purposes next uh, these are just uh, some clippings of how to create groups how to create a user, how to apply permission to each group. And then this is like about project management, how to create global permissions. And once everything is done, uh, you also have this permission templates thing. 
uh, and then everything is done you create a token from here from the security section under the users by generating a token and pass it to the github ci right next is achieving multi tenancy in dependency track so it's similar to uh, sonar cube here what we do is we log into detrack as an admin and then we go to portfolio access control and enable the portfolio access control which is in beta version this is the one that ensures multi tenancy in de dependency track once that's done we create teams and then we add users to that and uh, before that we also like add all the required team permission uh, to that once that's done the users are been added to those particular teams and a team level api key has been generated and that particular api key is then passed as a github secret for the ci so as you can see in, in this particular github ci here we need to pass the dependency track api key which is at the team level so only the sbom that has been generated and passed through a dependency track instance via this particular action on all the users within that particular team would only be able to access that sbom on dependency track else they won't be able to use and this is a quick recap these are the points that we have already covered till now okay so this is the reference section that you can take a pass at it and why don't you try it out so i have added one bonus section for you what you can do is you can set up a k3d cluster on your local set up argo cd in it deploy sonar cube on your k3d cluster using argo cd and port forward it to port 9000 and follow this particular steps to generate a token that would be used as an authentication uh, for the sonar cube deployed on your kubernetes uh and once you follow this step you will be able to see this particular command that would be generated so in case of the host url what you need to do is you need to pass the local host url for the sonar cube instance and the login token would be generated by itself and don't worry i have already deleted this token for security reasons right and then once you run those command a sonar cube report would be generated and pushed to sonar cube instance that you would be able to watch amazing you want to watch connect if you have any questions if you have any doubts feel free to ping me on linkedin i am always available there i'll be uploading this codes and other information on github probably may i, I may publish a blog on medium as well feel free to ping me on twitter as well i know this particular session was loaded with a lot of information and i hope um, i could add some value to the community thank you so much all and definitely if you have any question feel free to ping me on linkedin thank you